Fueled by Death Guest. The last time we had you on this show, Mike, it was back in the conference room days when we were doing this off the ping pong table. And uh, I miss the ping pong table. Just yeah. saying, just throwing that out there. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we are going to do is we're going to upgrade this. It's yeah, you guys point. don't like this plastic yeah, table? Yeah, yeah. Well, it squeaks we'll, when I lean on we'll, it. We'll get there. We'll get you we'll a new there. one from Home Depot or Walmart. Yeah. Um, but I really wanted to have you back on. For those of you guys tuning into this show, if you did not catch the first time that Mike was on the show, it was episode 17 back in season one, and we talked about all things Death Wish. We're going to do a little bit of that this time around. And I actually uh, threw this out to the community at large um, to see to pick their brains as well as to um, you know some questions for you because you know it's their opportunity to be able to really kind of pick the brain of the owner of Deathwish Coffee, which I think is fun. And uh, first one I want to start out with because you've been posting about it incessantly. Have you named your duck yet? I um, I know what I call him. That's probably not his name. <laughs> But yeah, so I've had this duck for the last seven days. Every time I wake up, I usually wake up around four thirty-five a.m. and I, every I walk downstairs and I look in my pool in the backyard and there's this duck. I think it's a female duck, and it's just it's floating around in my pool or it's walking around on the uh, you know my cement patio there, taking dumps everywhere. <laughs> duck dumps. So, so no, I haven't named it. I mean, I'm, I I call it the duck. And my dog has no interest in it, so my dog's not scaring it away. And I, I tried to train my dog, Odin, to uh, attack this duck. So <laughs> I actually walked him out with a leash the other day, and I got him all excited. And the duck just jumped into the water. So the, the duck's smarter than my dog. <laughs> well, probably a little smart, smarter than me. But I found a good deterrent. Um, this may be the only duck to... Uh, be afraid of water. So if I get the hose out and and chase it down with the hose and spray it, it flies away. That's so, so that's, funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've I've gone online to, to look up ways to deter ducks from landing in my pool. One of them was to buy like a float that looks like an alligator. So this is a a, a common issue. Ducks and pools. I mean, I don't know if it's. Oh yes, 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 yes. I did Google it, and yes, it does happen, <laughs> and it's not good. You're not. You don't want ducks swimming in your pool and shitting in your pool. Yeah. Because it, you know, luckily, like I have the right amount of chlorine in there. But if I didn't, and the pool chemicals were off, yeah. I could potentially have some some nasty stuff swimming around in there. So I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I need to get an alligator float or and somebody somebody wrote on there an owl, like a like a fake owl. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. But, so like a scarecrow, but... Uh, yeah, if anybody has any good solutions, <laughs> I haven't yeah. tried these yet, let me know. Maybe this is uh, something we can develop at Death Wish. Oh, yes. With our a many Death resources. Wish duck deterrent. <laughs> 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 Look for that, late 2018. Um, or if anybody has a name for this duck. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. would like to uh, give to, it a name. To na- or, yeah. Her a name. Uh, outside of the duck. <laughs> right. Or pain in the ass. Um, yes. <laughs> another question kind of stemming from that that we got from the community... Um, like outside of trying to shoot ducks away from your pool, what does what do you like to do to decompress? You run Death Wish Coffee on a daily basis, and you have when you do get downtime. I know it's very precious. What 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 is some of the stuff that you do to kind of get I, away from the office? I drink. You, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> Me too. Good answer. I get out of here stressed out. No, um, I read a lot. Um. That's my probably my favorite thing to do. If I can just isolate myself and read uh, a good, I, I like to read business books, believe it or not, and uh, self help books. I know that sounds pretty lame, but every once in a while I'll get into a good fiction book as well. Spend time with my dog, spend time with my girlfriend, hang out outside when it's nice out, do yard work. I'm, I've been into like this. Um, handyman kick lately so i built like this loft in my garage i built this table uh, for next to my washer and dryer so i've been doing a little bit of woodwork i built this raised bed uh garden for for my girlfriend emily so i've been doing like self-help not self-help uh handyman type stuff that's pretty awesome i mean that's a lot of good stuff to just get away from you know the day-to-day grind i know somebody who could use a new table (laughs) <laughs> just, just throwing that. Well, uh, all of my it's, it's nice. It's, it's pretty actually interesting. You said that all of my uh, woodworking has been made with pallets, empty pallets, and broken out boxes from around the warehouse. Oh so I, I'm sure yeah. I could, you know, find some wood around here and 
and bring in my all right my my table saw and I'm in my, my I'm in. drill. And I love put it. something together. You know, as far as you know, as much stigma as self help books get, I feel like as far as staying in tune with especially how to lead and how to run a business, it's almost there's almost nothing better out there. And you find that all these CEOs and successful people, that's what they're doing. They're they're reaching out to these resources and 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 using these self-help books to run giant companies. Um, is there any in particular that have really held true to you on what you do here and, and your success? Yeah, I mean, I really, <laughs> a lot of them are very, very, very similar. Um, mm -hmm. They're just kind of, it's the same message delivered a different way, which yeah. to me is great because, you know, it, I just get it. You know, sometimes I, I learn something one way and it doesn't really resonate, but I'll, I'll read another author who's, who's written it and it comes across totally different. Um, I mean, I'm a, this, this is going to sound great. I'm, I'm a Tony Robbins guy. Mm -hmm. I started reading Tony Robbins a long time ago. I've been to a few of his events um, and man, they get you out of your comfort zone really quick. Uh, you get to do. No, they make you do some like crazy stuff. Um, I don't, did I talk about a Tony? Did I talk about Tony Robbins last time? No, no. Oh, no, so no. I'll tell you about one of his like, his events. <laughs> and man, like I said, they get you out of your comfort zone. So and actually, I brought John to this John Swedish to the, the to the first one I went to, and they put you in this giant room, and there's chairs, and they're very close together, and you're sitting around a bunch of strangers. And if you came with someone, they tell you not to sit next to that someone because they don't want you to be comfortable. Comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's the goal to get you out of your comfort zone. And they turn the air conditioner on basically as high as it can go. So I believe it was like 50, 56, 57 degrees in this place. Everyone's freezing, shivering, and they're making you get up, stand up, dance, dance with your partner. You're hugging your partner. This Not person your, you've never met. Never met before. <laughs> You're coming up with like all these, these strange like, I don't know, action moves that you're supposed to remember. Like just stuff that like really kind of like. I don't know how to explain it. It's uh, make you off balance. It's like almost. conditioning. It's like what is it called? MPLR? No, something. You know what it is? Neurologic conditioning or something? I don't know. Uh, it's familiar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's sure. basically like getting trying to get your energy and your mood up, and then doing something very strange. You know, whether it's snapping your fingers or like I don't know, um, flexing or, or doing something like getting your getting yourself into this really energetic state of mind and then doing a weird move that you usually don't do on your body so and you do this for like three days in a row it's very weird <laughs> oh man and then but it's weird after it's you like, put you in a weird mindset a weird mindset but then after you leave you know he says you know if you ever get in like that low energy you know if you really if your brain is kind of turning sour and negative you know you do that move and it's supposed to bring you right back to that place. It's like it's a it's an anchor technique. Yeah, it's yeah. anchoring. Uh, so I mean cool. that's just that's just one part of it. I mean there's tons of other weird stuff. We we walked across fire. Uh, oh, so you did you did walk across yeah, the coals? Yeah, we did the, we did the coal walk. <laughs> was it hot? No, it wasn't. <laughs> they they it seemed to me. I mean there was hot. It's more of a mental thing. There was right? hot parts. Yeah, you you can. I mean they do it at night, so you see the red coals, but they spray it down a little bit. I, I heard it's not really hot unless you stay in one place for too long. And they started having injuries with people who yeah. got comfortable with it and started trying to take selfies while standing <laughs> on the coals. Oh, my God. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, yeah. They deserve to get burned. <laughs> yeah. And, man, you meet all sorts of people there. That's all cool. sorts of people. It was very interesting. It really, it does get you out of comfort. You, you're there for this guy's an animal. He he starts at, I think, 9 a.m. He doesn't finish till after midnight. Wow. And he doesn't he doesn't like people taking breaks. They shut the doors and they guard wow. them. So you can't even you can't even take a leak. You know, wow. I mean, you can, but they right. don't they don't suggest it. They they basically chase you and tell you to run. Uh, oh I'm, make, I'm making God. it sound like a torture. Like a, it sounds like a cult. <laughs> is what it sounds it, like. It does sound like a cult. Now that I'm talking about it. But it sounds like you're getting what you're getting out of it is is like a different perspective on how to manage not only you know, the company that you have, but also yourself. Oh, it's reconditioning, right? Yeah. So it is It is actually using my manipulation cult techniques, but, you know, another word for manipulation is inspiration, right? If you're inspired, you're you're being manipulated by somebody in a positive way. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is using mental conditioning uh, and reconditioning to kind of change your perspective on everything so you're not stuck in this this box because if you're stuck in that box you're just going to be like everybody else you want to be yeah. outside of that you want to be on top you know that's yeah. that's one way to do it for sure so is it, and then and they t teach valuable lessons as well health health advice um 
diet, diet advice, mm-hmm. um, business advice. They have relationship advice. You know, very sound principles. Um, but yeah, it's wild. And then another another self help guru I saw not long ago, and totally outside of my comfort zone once again, was Joel Austin. He's oh, that mega wow. preacher yeah. from Texas. Mm-hmm. He would came into the area. Now I'm not very li- religious, but. You know, I kind of want to say, hey, this guy is the mega preacher. He's the best at what he does mm-hmm. in his field. I got to I got to check this guy out. So I went down and I saw him at our local um, our local arena. And yeah, he was pretty interesting, too. I mean, very similar message to the Tony Robbins thing. Very similar to a lot of the books I read. He preaches a lot of positivity. Basically, he calls positivity Jesus and he calls ne- negativity the devil. Yeah. So there's a lot of Jesus and a lot of devil talk. But. You know, if, same kind of message. Same though. message. Yeah. Oh, and it was, you know, it was, but it was good. You know, it was a lot of, it was a refresher of like a lot of things that I would say I already know, but it's some things that like fly out the window yeah. um, during your day to day life. You know, specifically, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you can um, kind of get off on the right side of the bed or wrong side of the bed. You know, you can just, or you can just sit there and, and really, before you even get out of bed, just have that, think of the, I'm not really saying it right. Think of the, um, all that can be accomplished, not don't dread going into work. You know, you just think about, hey, what is why is this going to be the best day ever? And I ask myself that a lot. Like, how can I make this the best day of my life? Like, what what are some things I can do? Um, and then it's up to me to, to get that. But at least getting out of bed, it's like I have a game plan. Well, it's, it's one thing that I preach here a lot. Be the hero of your own story. Right. Yeah. If, you, if this was a movie and your, your life was this movie, what would your main character do? You know, even if you're living the, your worst life at that time if you start thinking that way that, that's how most movies start right the dudes in the dumps and he's like something happens where he has to, to 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 defy adversity and come out on top well how do you get to that point what are the steps that you need to take to get there yeah but uh moving on to more of our community questions and i know this one comes up a lot and i don't necessarily advocate this even though i'm asking it what do you think about making a light roast with death wish I didn't even know that comes up a lot. It does. Man, really? I need yeah. to put my ear to the ground We've, a little uh, bit more. We definitely had um, a few out there asking. And I know uh, one of the biggest ones was um, uh, Jason Heath. Um, but I, there, I've I've heard the rumblings before. Jason Heath says everything. <laughs> but, but I've heard the rumblings. <laughs> but thank you, Jason be- Heath. We like to be from, challenged. <laughs> from other people, you know. And I, I, as a legitimate question, you know, I mean, we are the world's strongest coffee. And we pride ourselves on the blend that we make. Um, and is there ever the idea in your head to branch out and kind of change that footprint? So when I, the idea for, for death wish coffee came from my customers in my coffee shop, they'd come in and they'd say, Hey Mike, you know, give me a cup of your strongest coffee. And at that point I'd always go, all right, do you want the coffee that tastes the strongest? Do you want the, you know, the boldest coffee or do you want, you know, the one, the, the coffee with the most caffeine? And they'd always, that's when like the confusion came in and mm-hmm. we'd have this awkward conversation and I'd try to tell them, you know, the dark coffee's not necessarily always, um, the most caffeinated and, you know, then that, that's when the light bulb went off. I was like, okay, I should just make a very caffeinated dark roast coffee and then I won't have to have this conversation over and over <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, there, you can get some strong coffees that are light roast. Now my goal always that. Um, here at Death Wish Coffee was to keep things pretty simple. Um, keep things simple. Just have one product. Focus on that one product and then go broad with the market. Mm-hmm. Um, by market, I mean like go broad with uh, just kind of start at a center and, and grow grow our customer base with that one product. Once we, once we got to a very comfortable point with our customer base, then we can start diving deep into the product line. Mm-hmm. So... Do we have anything on the table yet? No, we're still kind of broaden, broadening our market. But once it's to a point where we're comfortable with, we're going to start diving deep into the product line. I think at that point, we're going to see, you may see, I don't want to make any promises. Right. Um, some, yeah, some different blends from Death Wish Coffee. And I mean, we've dipped our toes into that already with the barrel blend. Barrel brand coffee you that we it, do i got it <laughs> um and uh and you know and also um you know our our collaboration with zach wild and making Valhalla java and uh 
I think uh, I, I like that this company, even though we have a single vision as to, you know, like you said, to really put out the best product that we can and, and make it as simple as possible, that we're willing to, you know, not put any idea off the table. I, I think I think that's cool. Yeah, so, I changed my mind a lot. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a lot too much. Um, some would say <laughs> now, <laughs> now I know we talked to some experts and they s I remember reading some advice about doing maybe a caramel roast. I'm very hmm. curious on what something with our coffee because they were really impressed with our coffee and the, the quality of it. And they, they were suggesting maybe maybe a caramel roast would bring out the best flavors of the beans that we have. That'd be something that you would be interesting in, uh, I don't know, at least researching? Yeah, we just actually started working with um, one of the top coffee experts, actually. She, she was just in here not long ago. And she her, was awesome. Yeah, and she's very knowledgeable. And her main objective is to come into coffee, uh, coffee companies, uh, coffee roasters, and to look at their equipment and make slight adjustments to bring out the best in everything that uh, we're doing on the, the the best taste of the coffee, the, the, the freshest of the coffee, basically an all encompassing quality uh, improvement. But you're not going to notice a, a giant change. But she says, hey, I think I can we I think that I can tweak this enough where it's going to be even better than it is now. So it's exciting. It's really exciting. I was mostly like I was kind of taken aback by how much she liked our coffee she was like not much smoke in it she said for a dark roast and it was a very clean bean and it like tested really well and it's like you know i know it's good i know it's good i drink it all the time and it's i feel like i have a, even though i work for the co company i have an unbiased perspective on my my taste for coffee and i know we're we're freaking awesome but like hearing it, you know, uh, uh, verified by one of the, the experts is kind of like, you know, yeah, makes me puff out yeah. my chest. Oh, oh yeah, me it's too. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> makes me, makes, lets me know we're, we're on the right track. Yeah. Just quality control is, she's just got some great ideas that once we implement here, I mean, and we're in the process of implementing yeah. them right now. Um, it's just going to improve our, uh, improve our efficiency is not the word. Uh, Consistency, yeah. consistency, mm -hmm. and our flavor. Mm -hmm. um, speaking back on some of the community um, questions, uh, a lot of the questions stem around um, our products and our merchandise, and I kind of want to rapid fire through some of these just to get your actual answer on some of these. When it can be like a yes or a no or a no comment if you'd like. No, I know. I'm, what, I'm one of those. I'm not a yes or no person. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a yeah. Let's think about that yeah. for a while, and, and that's usually unless it's a hell no or a hell yes. I'm usually like, oh, let's think about that. Maybe like, where's the data? Where's right, the, right. <laughs> Show me the numbers. I'll try. I'll try. So first of all, I didn't even know this was a thing. I had to look it up. But a lot of people were asking this question. Um, do we have ever any plan or idea to make a larger K cup? I didn't know that it even existed. Right? No, not right now. They have actually a, a larger K cup for you can brew like a craft, like a whole craft of it. Like, yeah. a, like a craft for like I don't know, like a, it's like a six cupper. Yeah. I've seen those in the past. Um, I mean, no, I don't have a plan to make those right now. But I've actually I've seen these, and I'm, I'm not going to make these. We're not going to make these either. But I was in San Francisco, I think, and they had these Keurig pods that were about the size. They were to make coffee for like an entire company, and these were about the size. It looked like the. Uh, Keurig pod about the size of a bucket. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. We should make just one of those. <laughs> yeah, That'd be amazing. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we, uh, <laughs> oh, we could do. Oh, a oh, oh, <laughs> oh, we could do a death wish challenge where you have to drink all oh, the, the bucket of I coffee love it. yourself. Oh, I like I it. Love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't want to take it off the table, but okay. No, but no. Um, <laughs> I kind of on that on that uh, respect. Uh, another question that came across was. Um, do you have any idea, plan, or want to do any kind of franchising or licensing, like with, like, let's say, you know, uh, the energy drink side or or that kind of thing, like with with the brand itself? Do you ever do you ever want to do anything uh, like that? I mean, we we do similar things now with our uh, Rad Soap Company. We have the Death Wish yeah. Soap. We have uh, the Death Wish Vodka. Mm -hmm. We have beard some bomb. Yeah, we have the beard bombs. We have the candles. We have there's a few things out there where, where we do like a co-branding thing with they use our product in their product, uh, mostly local companies up here in upstate New York. Do I have any? No, I don't have any plans to. There's nothing on the table to do any 
anymore. Uh, anymore. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's, to me, it's I, I like it because it's especially if it's with a uh, company here in the community. I think it's a great community builder. It's a great piece of conversation. Um, but I don't, I mean, we're open. Always, I'm open. Always, always open to ideas, you know, who knows? It's stemming out of that question. Um, I, another question that was brought up by a few of the members who I think are local as well. Um, now that, uh, um, unfortunately old Saratoga has closed their doors. Uh, will, do we ever have the idea of maybe doing another beer collaboration in like a local sense? Yeah, that was a fun project. Yeah. It really was. I loved those beers. <laughs> they were good. Yeah, yeah, they were good. And there was always beer in the office, which was a little, was a little risky, but yeah. it was it was great to take some home. Um, nothing's in the works right now. We have talked with a couple companies, but nothing's in the works right now. All right. So it's it's I don't know. It was fun. It's not like a. It's one of those products where it's not like a. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I don't hang my hat on. I don't. I don't depend right. on it. You know, right. as a business, we don't depend on that business. It's, it's more, more fun. It's than more it is. fun if it's yeah. yeah. If we can have a good time with it, and you know, the teams involved, and it really helps build the brand, and does something like good for people. I think it's, yeah, I think that's a win. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What about uh, more Valhalla Java merchandise? We get a lot of questions for that. People want hoodies, people want um, flags, people want more merchandise with that. And I wanted you to speak a little bit of just about, like, maybe as to why we're not doing that. Yeah, I mean, we definitely can. Yeah. Um, there's just an extra approval process. We need to we need to reach out to Zach Wild and make sure we get his approval. Um, with that, he's very, he's very into the brand, which is great. And he's very active in the brand, and he helps... He helps with all the design. So sometimes, you know, it's kind of like that extra, the extra bottleneck in the process. Yeah. And yeah, that's not a bad thing. I mean, he, you know, he wants, he wants to have his interest uh, shown on, on the products. Yeah. So. I mean, we want his stamp of approval. Oh yeah. We I want think that's way approval. better than working with somebody who's like, ah, do whatever. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Like, so, I mean, yeah. there's just some, there's, there's some give and take there and it just takes a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's on us as well. We we need to reach out to him more and throw ideas at him, and then kind of get get that back and forth going. Because right now, I don't think we have a ton of back and forth going, um, in terms of, yeah, new product development on the merchandise side. But yeah, definitely cool. cool. Um, and then two products that are uh, that we've done that are constantly being brought up, and I'd love for you to to answer it to to the community at large. First being um, our Nespresso pods. Uh, which we which we did try, um, and uh, I w are we still going to do that? Are we going to come out with a new product? Yes, yeah, so those those Nespresso pods. I think they had a three and a half. They had under a four star review on Amazon. I think even on our website. So I just as a company, we just took the bit the bullet there and just scrapped them. We threw them all out. You know, we're, we're not going to put out a product that's not the best po possible product. Um, so they are under a redesign right now. It looks like we have a potential test product that will be, we probably won't even release it. It'll probably just be sent out to some former uh, customer, not former customer, but customers who had purchased those cups in the past. And we'll, we'll have them test them, uh, make sure they're good to go, and then we'll release it. So it, it, it will happen, but... Taking our time with it. Yeah, it has to, yeah, we want to take our time with it. I'm sure um, there's a ton of people right now going, I'll, I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, of course. I'll test it. Of those course. espresso pods were great. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally love them. They made a great shot of espresso. But, yeah, there are some complications with a developing a, a, a new item like that. Um, and uh, if there's any hiccup along the way, we don't we don't want to put out a subpar right. product whatsoever. So it's a no-brainer just to, just to pull it all back, figure it out, re-release when we know Everything is in the right place. Yeah, and then on uh, on that same vein, um, another product that I know is in the works, and I'd like you to talk a little bit on, is um, we are going to be doing another cold brew. Yeah, yeah, I've been drinking so much cold brew the past. <laughs> testing, <laughs> testing, testing. Yeah, a lot of testing. <laughs> um, I visited some amazing facilities, learned the the, the the trade secrets on getting this cold brew perfect, and it's coming. I'd say. I don't want to, I'd say probably by the end of August. I know I initially, last year I promised the first quarter, but we're way past that now. Well, well it's, again. It's one of those things again. Yeah, we don't want to put out a subpar product by any means. And since we had a hiccup to begin with, we, we you know, dot all of our I's and cross all of our T's and make sure we come out with the best possible death wish cold brew that we could ever brew. 
Yeah. Period. Yeah. And I think it will be. I think it's going to be a dynamite product. Uh, might be a little different. Um, maybe a little different style can. We'll see. We'll uh, see. We have some options. But yeah, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it too. Speaking of exciting things on the horizon, and this is something I really wanted to dive into. Um, since last year, the company has grown a lot. Um, I mean, you know, the company grows every single year, but just since the la- when we had you on the show last year until now, such growth has happened. And one of those biggest things is we are getting into retail now. And um, it, we are just about, we, in fact, no, I think as this episode's coming out, we are now in 1,600 Walmart stores across the nation and a handful of other grocery outlets um, on the East Coast and on the West Coast. What has that been like from the owner of the company? Like, what? How has that been? Like? Is it exciting? Is it is it nerve wracking? Is it? Yeah, it's a little of both. Um, thinking back five years, my goal was never to hey have Death Wish coffee in every Walmart. Right. That wasn't you know that wasn't the goal. But that we we received such great uh, response, and we found out that Death Wish resonates with so many different types of customers. That it just seemed like a, you know, a, a good decision. You know, our, like it, we have such a broad market and, and customers from all walks of life love Death Wish Coffee, and there's WalMarts everywhere. You can't, you can't, you can't escape, can't them. escape them. <laughs> but yeah, last year in 2017, Walmart actually shot me an email, and they're like, "Hey, we we recognize your product as a, you know, an up and comer, and invited Eric and I down to Bentonville, Arkansas. So I actually got to go to Walmart headquarters." The Walmart. The Walmart. <laughs> yeah. I met the CEO of Walmart. I met Mr. Walmart. I met the coffee buyer, right, of Walmart. And it was a cool, cool experience. It was um, Walmart right now. They're doing a America at Work program or Made in the USA program. They're calling it by two names. Actually, I think the hashtag's Made in USA. The, the program's called America at Work. But they've dedicated or put aside $15 billion to reinvest back into American manufacturing. Um, and wow, they, wow. they invited thousands of businesses down to their open call event. And they've been doing this for the last two years, I believe. And they get them all together, all these businesses together, and they you basically you walk into a room. It's almost like Shark Tank style. Shark Tank style. You're in this small room, and you have 15 minutes to maybe it's less than 15 minutes it was a couple months ago it, it was a short period of time and you had to pitch your product to the buyer and they could either give you a green slip that meant you're good to go a red slip basically like fuck off or you could get a maybe when we got the maybe oh so um the maybe was basically they told us we're not resetting our coffee set for a while so sit tight and we did. We sat tight. Um, this whole wholesale building, uh, business building, it's a it's a new it's a new beast for me. It's it's a lot slower. It's a lot more uh, around building a relationship with the buyer, and not necessarily your customer. Um, it's kind of like who you know. Like if you know some guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, you know who runs the the coffee buying. You know you're in. Uh, I guess with Walmart it wasn't the case. We just got that invite, but. Yeah, it was it was stressful, and we you know we left and we we're like, I don't know, we didn't even know how we felt about it. We knew it was a great experience. Um, it was a lesson learned. You know, we we had never done a pitch like that before, but it was. I, mean, I guess it was successful. It was, I mean, in hindsight, it was very successful. But yeah. at the, at the time, it was just like, wow, Walmart's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about um, production wise? Um, how it's going to affect the company? Um, do you think? Is this another Super Bowl situation? I've heard I've actually heard that exact question from some of our community members. Like, are we are we looking at a huge scale up because of all of this retail or are we primed to take it on or have you guys had Tim on the podcast yet? Not yet. Can't all right. Wait. So yeah. Tim so Tim as as our company grows, I get the, uh, well, we actually brought in Tim. He's our new CFO. Our old CFO is me and yeah. all is <laughs> just it's a it's I, <laughs> I thought I was good. I'm not good. Tim is good. Tim's a fucking wizard. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. He needs a wizard hat and a wand. Some call me Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's amazing. Um, so yes, with Tim's help and guidance, we've run capacity analysis on our business to see exactly that. Can we? Right. Can we do what we're promising these customers that we can do? And 
We can. According to Tim, we can. I mean, don't get me wrong. Could things run smoother? I think with every manufacturing company, things can run quite a bit yeah, smoother. Yeah. Um, but the capacity is there. The capacity is there. Um, yeah, we, we'll shore up some things. We're also working with some third-party partners that help us, especially on the packaging side for all these uh, single-serve cups. So it's not like they're uh, being done on our small 60-cup-per-minute machines. You know, right. we have... We're working with the best company, best companies in the business to pr- produce uh, a product that they can do with multi-million dollar machines and equipment and make sure like it's on point and 100 percent perfect. The testing process at these facilities is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the amount of people removed from the auto because of the automation, you would be like, oh, OK, I see how. Like, I don't even know how this is good for a, a manu- manufacturing, but then if you go, you walk to the end of the line and the amount of people testing the product and making sure the product is perfect is it blows my mind. It's um, awesome. Yeah, it's just like they move the labor from produ- or packing to testing. To testing. And, yeah, it's, it's, good. it's good news for the consumer. That's yeah. cool. I mean, we must be in a very um, unique position now as death wish coffee because even with the third party companies that we're working with we are still only a company of 30 employees who can also say in the same breath that we are the number one selling coffee on amazon and are about to be in 2000 retail locations in in america i i i would i would hazard a bet that there's not another company out there that can have that same sentence come out of their mouth yeah and i believe we fulfilled the product our, our first po a purchase order we we fulfilled uh, almost 30 days early. My, you probably. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And thanks to Dustin. That was Heck mostly yeah. Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <DM>. <laughs> um, I, I earned that title. <laughs> that's, that's really cool. Uh, speaking on the growth of the company, um, uh, and this actually stems from a question from the community as well. Um, it, the goal, obviously, is always to put out the best product possible, but it's also to you know grow your company as much as you can. Um, in, just within the last year or the last couple of years, um, have you found the growth of this company to be manageable, or do you think it's it, it, it's gotten away from you at times, or is it, it like is it a roller coaster kind of thing? Well, with the with we have a great team, thank God, um, that kind of handles it really well and i've always told people my goal is not to have the biggest coffee company in the world that's not it i I want the best coffee company in the world um and with that comes the best team the best team makes the team makes the company Mm -hmm. Uh, so i i say as we as we grow as a team that's what we're where you're going to see the company the company grow um into into these uh different markets and different products so I don't know if I got too far away from the question. No, right there, I think but, that's exactly. But I think, what I think it is. as the team grows and gets better, the company can grow. But no, we're not getting we're not getting ahead of ourselves. Are you? And then the second part of this question was: Is this company started out? Somebody write down the date and time. I said that. I will. <laughs> I will. No, we, we got that timestamp. Um, as this as this company started out, I mean, God, in the basement of coffee traders, um, you know, as you were a one on one basis with your customer. And as it grew, you always held that in the highest regard possible as, you know, as really listening and keeping attention to the customer base that of the product that you're creating. Are you afraid of losing that feel as the company grows bigger, of losing the, the group of fans, the community members that, that, that you've built from that ground up? Oh, yeah, I'm afraid. I'm a, I think I'm always afraid of losing that. I love that. That's one of my favorite parts. I do I get a chance to go on social media as much as I used to to, you know, interact with people and say what's up? No. Um, luckily, a lot of our customers stop in now. I think I went to lunch with CJ twice last month, which is nice. Um, I went to uh, I see Dee Dee all the time. She swings down. I swear to God, I'm going to become a cupcake. I know <laughs> the um, amount of cupcakes she brings. I, I mean, personally, I will always. I want to make sure to always, you know, set time aside to you know, pay attention to what the customers are saying, so that that close customer care is always part of the game plan as far as Death Wish goes. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you guys brought that up. Something for me to even rethink about. You know what I mean? Because you know things do get busy. I'm in meetings all day long. Yeah, and everyone is. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is, we get caught working on. Uh, P 
pieces of the business that are very internal. You know, like yesterday, for instance, I spent, oh no, the day before yesterday, I spent all day working on a business continuity plan. Sounds really exciting. It's, it's basically, like all, it's basically backups too. If our plan doesn't work, well, what's the backup? You know, right. or, or if something bad happens here, where do we go? So yeah, that's you know, been fun. Yeah, we're <laughs> I've been working with Dustin a lot on that, and it's right. It's kind of like if plan A doesn't work, what's plan B, and how do we back? How do we make sure we can continue to deliver value? But while I'm doing that, I'm not able to right get in, get online, and and, and, and interact with everyone and see what's going on and hear what they think about our latest pin release which I think there was some, a little bit of like, actually I did hear that. People didn't love the, uh, some people didn't love the, the pin release in the $75 purchase to get. I thought we were doing two things there. I thought we were doing a, I'm yeah, not no comment. trying new things. But Mike, I'm not in marketing. We might cut this. Pe- we might cut this piece out. <laughs> no, no. I mean, we're we are always trying new things, and and but but what that shows is you. Even though you're busy, you're you're still trying to listen to the community. You're still ear to the created. ground. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that the I message think, heard. I heard it. I, yeah. I heard it. And yes, I will. I'm gonna bring it up at our next meeting. And yeah, pin, uh, pin set. That pin set was cool. Should you have to spend seventy five dollars to get it? Eh. I mean, I understand what the business side point of it, but from the consumers or from the customer side or, you know, from the, the community side, even, eh, that's probably not the best decision. But again, I would, I would love for yeah, all Mike, Mike fighting for the people, man. Well, I think that's, what's great about this company too, is, is like, again, it's the idea that we'll try any idea. That was an idea that we had and we tried and we're taking the feedback back from it. And if we do another pin set, we'll probably release it in a completely different way because we're going to, you know, adapt and grow that continuity plan, you know, like, okay, plan A didn't work. What's, what's plan B? Right. You know, like when we figure that out from there, I think that's that's really, really cool. Um, uh, so one thing that uh, we talked about a little bit here and we haven't seen much from yet uh, is the new Death Wish Mobile, which is this giant, giant 400 feet long truck, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty much a, a state of the art cafe on wheels, which is amazing. Um where do you see this thing going? Where where do you want to bring this thing? What do you want to do with this giant yeah, some, Death Wish mobile? I love talking to the team and they're like, Mike, sometimes like you give us the hardest time over the smallest expense. Like I swear I argued for an hour with Kane and Warren and Eric about a table, like yep. a like a forty dollar table. <laughs> Right, I wouldn't pull the trigger on this table because I thought last time you guys said you needed a table, I got you a table, and you said that's the only table we need, and now we need another one. For- Anyways, <laughs> dumbest thing ever. <laughs> and then other times I'll just I'll pull the trigger or give the go ahead on a you know hundred thousand dollar coffee truck without <laughs> really having a, a plan in mind. All I knew is we had a truck before. Yep. And. The, very safe. Yeah, the truck. truck. You know, it, it, but we we used it. And we yeah, got it was scariest rides I've ever. It was, it was ever five thousand dollars, and we got our five thousand dollars worth of use out of it. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, sure did. Probably more. Yeah, yeah. way more. Yeah. And then since we didn't have it anymore, I mean, we technically have it, but since we couldn't use it anymore, yeah. I just the next logical step in my warped mind at that time was to buy the greatest coffee truck we can find, so we can use it for all these events that we don't really have planned, but. <laughs> I think <laughs> the plan the plan probably is to start scheduling these events. You know, there's Comic Con, so there's yep. one event. Oh yeah, and, and that's that's not gonna be enough to pay it off. But there's some local things we go to. We go, we do do trade shows, and I was talking to Kane about possibly getting this truck onto the trade show floors. Yeah, you know, if, if it looks nice enough. Well, I mean, this truck is brand new. Um, it's gonna like you said, it's gonna be state of the art. We're gonna have you know, we're gonna have it's filtration system in it and cooling and heating and a slayer and a slayer espresso, espresso machine. machine it's going to have all the bells and whistles able to sell coffee and merchandise out of it i think you'll be able to buy merchandise online through the truck do you do you see us eventually taking this truck around the country yeah I mean, do, why do, not do, we're, we've been talking about getting an event team together um for doing just that i mean we're not going to show up at you know bar mitzvahs or anything or weddings, but you know we we will show up. You never break. know. Tomorrow, Mike yeah. could change his mind on that, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, we are planning and, and, and hitting events around, definitely around town to start. Then probably around New York, and we'll probably branch out around the Northeast. And eventually, once we, you know, with everything, you need to get systems and processes in place, so you know we don't make mistakes or, or do anything incorrect that get us in trouble. So once we have all those 
details worked out, I think that opens up the door to you know, traveling further and further with this truck. Cool. Because I know one of the, as soon as we announced that we were coming out with a new Death Wish Mobile, the community at large has just been like, well, I live here. Come visit me, you know? And I think, I think all 50 states want us to come, to come there. So, I mean, I'm in. You guys hear what Amazon did? The Amazon has a truck that like um, basically goes from town to town and it's just, you can, if you see it drive by, you can, I think you can go online and order products directly from the truck. Oh my gosh. It's like the greatest ice cream man in the world. Yes. It's basically <laughs> an Amazon, right. It's the Amazon ice cream truck, but no ice cream, but just. I don't know. It's Amazon. Just there sneakers. could be ice cream on there. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Uh, so. It's been almost a year since we've had you on the show. Has it been a year? It's been over a year. It's been over a year. Yeah. Has there been anything surprising or challenging that has happened within this this past year? Hmm. I, I, I feel like I'm, cha I'm challenged every day. Uh, not in a bad way. In a good way. It's fun. It's always dynamic. Something to do. Something to tackle. Um, the, the recall wasn't, you know, wasn't a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we had just about every regulatory agency in the country swing by to pay us a quick visit um made a lot of new friends <laughs> yeah but we got there with flying colors no we're definitely we're trying to hide anything we want to put out the best product possible and we, we just locked john's office we, you know, <laughs> we hold ourselves to very high standards but that was that was a, a process getting through that and making sure we have all our ducks in a row right now we're undertaking uh an an SQF initiative, and that's a safe quality food initiative. And this is a, a program that basically the safest food companies in the, on the planet, like this is what this is a standard they're held to. Um, not many coffee roasters have this right now. Actually, when I was out uh, visiting other coffee roasters, which I do from time to time, just as you know, make friends in the industry, I visited a, a large coffee plant uh, out in Wisconsin, and they had a sign that says they were one of 12 SQF level three coffee facilities in the United States. Wow. So there was only 12 and, and this is the initiative we're undertaking right now. And it's giant. I mean, I, I've, I've read through the manual three times now and luckily a lot of the stuff is stuff we already do. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, syst a lot of processes we need to put in on top of that. So the whole the whole premise, not to bore everyone to death, but no. the whole pr premise of this uh, program is to uh, write down what you're going to do, do what you say you're going to do, and then prove that you did what you just did. So it's a lot of paperwork, a right. lot of paperwork. Let's check some balances check to some make balances. sure that you know it's safe as possible. But like like you said earlier, we're looking to be the best coffee company, not necessarily the biggest. And this right. is one of the things you have to do to become the best coffee company. You know, it's uh, yeah, world class. You know, we're be on the top top level. You know? If if it were easy, every coffee company would do it. Right. You know, and it's not. Yeah. We're doing it. Yeah. Um, looking ahead into this into this year and into next year, is there anything that you're looking forward to um, that isn't a secret that we can talk about? Or maybe a secret that <laughs> we can talk about. Uh, yeah, what are we looking? I mean, hmm. So we went over the coffee truck. Yeah. Let, let me think about this for a second. We okay. went over the cold brew. Yeah. We went over... Let's see what else SQF. You know, yeah. That's not very exciting though. <laughs> it's just paperwork. Yeah, I mean, we, we're growing, which is great. I think we're going to have some new hires coming in soon. Uh, we're moving into tons of wholesale stores, which we went over as well. That's exciting. Um, I mean, I am. We have, I've been looking for the last three years um, for a, you know, Death Wishes basic headquarters. Like we, yeah. right now, we're in a warehouse park, which is great. We have about actually we just leased out another 3,000 square feet um, to increase our footprint in this facility. But I've been looking to build, I've been looking to build a place for the last three years now. And um, yeah, I, there's just, I've had a, a very promising locations pop up, but haven't pulled the trigger on any of them. That's still a search in progress. I have been getting uh, hearings of, of some in, in working on some very promising leads. Um, which may or may not happen. I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different industry, and I'm very green there. So luckily, I've surrounded myself with a bunch of people who are experts um, on the construction side, on the real estate side, on the land development side. On the yeah, there's lots of people I got to know and outside of coffee 
um, to make this move and to do it the right way. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, but yeah, once it does happen, man, that's going to be exciting. That is going to be exciting. To put you on a, a little bit on a spot for, for this situation, if you had to put your money on it, how long do you think it is before we're in a facility like that? Hmm. My goal has always been August 2019. Eh. Yeah. It still could happen. Would you put your money on it? I wouldn't put my money on it. Yeah. I wouldn't put my money on it. I'd say at least 2018 two years. is getting pretty, pretty done. Yeah. <laughs> pretty quick. And it's, it's not like I haven't been working on it. I've been, it's daily. I was working on it this morning, sending out emails. Yeah. But who knows? Sometimes that's the way these things happen. It's really slow up front. And once, once, you know, I, once we get our claws in something, it happens almost overnight. Right, so right. we'll see. But I, I, I do have some very exciting, promising leads that if they happen, I think we'll be. Some big news. I mean, personally, to me, it sounds like you know Mecca. Like, yeah, can't I, wait. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's, I mean, it's be kind exciting. of. I've been saving up for. <laughs> <laughs> um, finally, uh, I want to go back to what we talked about in the beginning. Um, I mean, you are an avid reader of you know of what you enjoy, which is you know the business that you created. And, and and you read a lot about you know how to make the best coffee company that you can just like you like just like you said would what would be advice that you would give to somebody out there wanting to start their own business I, I just talked to a group of 11th and 12th graders <laughs> at the, the local high school no one asked that well, they <laughs> asked the wrong question yeah they no one asked that but I'm already I'm ready for it I think I am ready for it I would say, if you are comfortable being uncomfortable, especially initially, initially, I think then go for it. Um, if you're not comfortable being uncomfortable, maybe you want to kind of tiptoe your way into it very slowly and see what you can handle because it's not it's not a hobby. You know, I've heard this before. I, I didn't make it up, but you know, if, if you treat it like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. Right. Basically, it's going to pay you nothing. If you treat it like a job, you know, eventually it'll pay you like a job. So, and I treat this like a job, you know, I'm, I wake up, first thing I do, you know, I get to work, you know, I work, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, I work a lot. I work you and do. I, and I never, yeah. it never shuts off, you know, and I'm whenever emails on Sunday from you, you yeah, know? whenever I have free time and I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, even on the weekends, it's, you know, it's, I try to get into it. And so, yeah, I mean, if you can do that, I mean, luckily I don't have any kids right now. I shouldn't say luckily, but <laughs> I don't have any kids <laughs> right now. Now I'm not married. Um, I have a girlfriend I live with, long-term girlfriend, and I love her a lot, but it's, she's not demanding. She's the most laid-back, cool person ever. So I, she gives me time to work on the business um, as much as I want. She has her own friends and does her own stuff, so it's great. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you need to be there, but, but yeah, be comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's good, you know, and, and throwing that back to the first time that you were on the show, something that always stuck with me was you said that you know the reason one of the reasons why you work so hard and why you do a lot of reading and stuff is because you feel if you take the time you, you said if you're not learning something somebody else is learning something god you're right i'm and, so competitive and that's it, what i think if and, i'm not yeah. doing it somebody else so, is and and then you are me. now second oh, and not god. first when you said that i got a not in my stomach <laughs> <laughs> well so it, that true. stuck with me that really did and like i've i've put that into my own work practices you know it's like if i if i take i i could take this time to not maybe put the work in but if i do put the work in i'm going to be that much more ahead of yep. whoever else is doing it you know i think i think if you're starting your own business that that's that's something to strive for yeah yeah absolutely cool and it kind of yeah it takes over your life but in a good way i'm, yeah. I'm very happy very happy um I don't have as many hobbies as I probably should, but but we have a lot of fun here. Yeah, we, we do, do have a lot of fun. Like yeah. a lot of fun. I Sometimes look I look back and like and I see salesmen coming in to talk to us and we're here having fun. It must be such a spectacle to them because they're going into business after business after business, talking to schlep after schlep, and they they walk in and we're cheering around a table, doing whatever we're doing, whether it be ping pong or yeah. dice games, <laughs> whatever it is. And it's it's just that's a, all that Emily thinks I do at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she's like, can you pick up the dog? I'm like, no, I'm working. She's like, yeah, we, just you know, call timeout on the ping pong. <laughs> like, no, that's not. I would I say that you're one of the best ping pong, probably the best ping pong ball player here. But get, you play it the least. I don't see you on the table that often. Yeah, I don't play. I used to play a lot when I was a kid. 
every 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 day after school I used to play as a kid, and I got good as a kid. It now shows. now I'm okay, but yeah, there's I get we'll I get us. beat I get beat daily. Someone beats me daily, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you but, better. But nonetheless, it's like yeah, you might might have a few less hobbies, but it's it's fucking wonderful here. It is. Know? And uh, you've created fun. you've created a monster. You don't need many. Ho- I mean, I certainly have less hobbies from working here. Yeah, and I don't fucking mind because the 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 amount of things I get to do from this job outweigh any hobby I'd be doing on my own. Yeah, you know, and but, so it's the juice is worth the squeeze, man. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Really I do is. wake up in the morning and I'm just like, ah, all right, I can't wait to get in. And yeah, then, you know, and I never used to say that when I was an accountant. It wasn't like, yeah. God, I can't wait get, to get into work <laughs> and like get going. I, I don't. Get accountant. Exactly. <laughs> I, I still remember my my last day as a or one of my last days as a dental lab technician. And I was I was trying to leave for work, but I was just sitting on the couch, like head in my hands, just like, I don't think I can do this anymore. Yeah. I can't. I'm just it's just so boring. And on, it's, I was just so unhappy and. I remember that day very vividly, and looking back on that now, it's it's very obvious that I made the right choice. Yeah, plus, unlimited coffee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. can't, can't beat that. that can't beat that. That doesn't sure. suck. Well, Mike, thanks for taking the time for sitting with us and uh, spilling your guts about the coffee yeah. company. Yeah, and, and thanks. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah. yeah we yeah. have to make it sooner than every uh, year. All right. I'm all about All right. That. Yeah. Every <laughs> other episode will be a Mike no, Brown no, episode. No, not every other <laughs> Welcome to the Mike Brown Show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Death Wish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.